This topic of Science 30 covers topics in Unit C, Physics. Uh, we will be talking about field theory, and we will start with talking about gravitational fields. A field is an invisible region of influence, so it's something that you cannot see but you can feel. It causes objects to experience a force. In physics, a field is an idea that is used to explain the effects of forces over a distance. We will study three types of fields in this course. The first is the gravitational field, so it is what you experience while standing on the earth. The second is an electric field, and you can see the baby being um, subjected to uh, electric field, so static electricity holds the balloons to her head, and a magnetic field which will hold magnets onto a piece of uh, metal that is subjected to magnetism. In order to discuss fields, we need to know what a force is. A force is a push or a pull, and it is calculated using the mass of an object times the acceleration of an object. So force is equal to mass times acceleration. Mass is always measured in the metric units grams or kilograms. Acceleration is always measured in meters per second squared. A field line or vector diagrams tell us the direction and the strength of a field. The direction of a field is determined by the direction of a test the direction a test object will move. So the field lines on the earth show everything is moving towards the center of the earth. The test object here would be anything with mass. In the second diagram, the field diagrams show that um, the objects would be moving towards the north or south pole of the magnet, and a test object would be another magnet. In the third diagram, that is static electricity, and the test object would be another charged object. So would the positive move to the negative or positive pole. It will be repelled by the positive pole and move towards the negative pole. What's the difference between weight and mass? We often use them interchangeably, but that is not the correct way of using those terms. Mass is the amount of matter in an object. We measure this using a triple beam balance, so that's the balance that you see below the scale. Mass does not change with the location, so you could weigh the you could measure the mass of the same object on Saturn or on the moon or on Earth and it would have the same mass. What's the difference with between mass and weight? Weight is defined as the force exerted on matter by gravity. It's measured using a scale, not a balance. And weight is equal to mass times acceleration or mass times gravity. Mass or weight can change with location so that you, for example, you weigh less on Earth than you would on the moon. So this guy weighs 100 kilograms on Earth, he only weighs 16.6 .6 kilograms on the Moon. And that's the difference between mass versus weight. Weightless means that there is no sensation of weight. It doesn't mean that you don't have mass, it's just that you don't feel that force of gravity pulling against you. The term zero gravity is also used, but scientists have adopted the term microgravity because the effects of Earth's gravitational force and other forces are not completely cancelled out. So there's a little bit of gravity, so that's why they call it microgravity. Gravitational fields. 
an invisible region of influence where the force of attraction acts to pull a smaller object towards a larger, more massive one. That is what keeps everything down on Earth, is gravity. We will study two types of relationships. The first is gravitational force, so the force due to gravity. So Fg, or the force due to gravity, is equal to mass times the force of gravity. So mass times G. So the force due to gravity is Fg. You measure that in newtons. You measure mass in kilograms. And you measure the magnitude of the gravitational field strength. So that is the acceleration due to gravity. And that is newtons per kilogram squared. This equation is found on page two of your data book. If you don't feel like you have to memorize it, just know where to find it. This equation is used to calculate the force of gravity on a test object. As the mass of the object increases, the gravitational force will, what's your guess, increase or decrease? Obviously, the gravitational force will increase because it is a relationship where it is multiplied together. The second type of relationship we will talk about is gravitational field strength where g is equal to gm over r squared. g is the magnitude of the gravitational field strength, so again, it is measured in newtons per kilograms. r is the radius of the source, or center to center distance. So if that was the earth, it would be the radius of the earth. The mass of the source, and the gravitational constant, so Gravitational constant can be found on your data book as well. This is 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11 newton meters squared per kilogram squared. Again, page 2 of your data book. What happens to gravitational field strength if the mass increases? Because this is a relationship where, again, you have... Um, gravitational constant times mass, it would also increase. What happens to the gravitational field strength if the radius increases? Because you're dividing by the radius, your gravitational field strength will decrease. This is why the gravitational field strength on Earth, never mind. Who will experience a higher gravitational field strength, you or a bird? You will experience a higher gravitational field strength because you weigh more than a bird, hopefully. What is Newton's law of universal gravitation? Isaac Newton reasoned that the moon revolves around the earth much as a ball revolves around a person when world person's hand when whirled on a string. So basically if you attached a string to a ball and then spun it around, that's how the moon is revolving around the earth. He concluded that it must be gravity, the force that attracts objects to the earth, providing the string that allows the moon to spin around the earth. The moon is pulled to the earth just as we are, but it is moving so fast that the earth's pull is just as strong just strong enough to hold it in a circular orbit and keeping it from flying off. So it's a constant push-pull between the forces that are pulling the moon towards the earth and the, the spinning forces that are trying to fling it away from earth's orbit. Newton's insights rested in the work of three people, Copernicus, Kepler, and Galileo, all of whom advocated that the sun was the center of the solar system, not the earth. And if you'll recall, some of these people were executed for proposing that. 
At the time, common sense suggested that the Earth is fixed in the center of the universe, and all the celestial bodies revolve around it. It is not easy to prove from observations that the Sun is the center of the solar system, and those who believed in a heliocentric or Sun-centered solar system were severely punished. Nonetheless, Newton determined that gravitational attraction between all matter depends on the mass of the two attracted objects and the square of the distance between them. It turns out that gravity is a very weak force and the actual constant of proportionality between the masses, distance, and resulting gravitational force is very difficult to determine. And it was not known for two centuries after Newton's death. Today, Newton's law of gravity explains with precise detail the motion of the planets and the asteroids within our solar system. So the formula is Fg is equal to Gm1 M2 over R squared. M1 and M2 are the mass of two objects. This is the same uh, formula except that we're adding two masses instead of one. This formula allows us to, to, to determine the force of gravity between two objects anywhere in our solar system, not just on Earth. The two formulas on page two combined is equal to Newton's law of universal gravitation. Gravity meters are used to detect gravity. High values indicate ore or metal deposits. Low values indicate coal or oil deposits. Spring type measure the amount of stretch on a spring supporting a mass. So likely the yellow one is a spring type gravity meter. When we put people up into space, they experience a certain amount of physiological symptoms of being in space or being in microgravity. One of the most visible, visible effects of space mission is no doubt the puffy face bird leg look that astronauts get. So if you look at the on earth picture, he looks like he has strong muscles in his legs. He looks pretty. Um, his face looks pretty normal and in space people get thin legs and puffy faces. Why is that? The gravitational f force on earth keeps bo bones under a load. So a load is supporting the weight of your body. Astronauts can lose bone mass in space over time because their bones aren't supporting the load of their body. The muscles in particular, the leg muscles, are underused and become flabby and lose both tone and mass. Astronauts are then subject to something called muscular atrophy, which means that the muscles waste away. The bones too become weaker because of a loss of minerals, calcium, potassium, and sodium to be precise. This bone degradation can reduce bones in lower limbs by up to 10%. So depending on how long you're in space, you can lose up to 10% of your bone mass. Astronauts try to mitigate these changes by taking medication and especially by exercising as often as possible. Same bone and muscular atrophy occurs with patients who are confined to bed. So if you're not putting a load on your bones and you're not using your muscles, you lose them. So why do they have a puffy face? On Earth, the heart is programmed to distribute the load evenly throughout the body. The heart must do more work to supply the upper body because the blood is naturally drawn downward by the force of gravity. In space, body fluids no longer flow back down naturally by gravity, but the heart is still programmed the way it was on Earth. So under 
the pressure of the heart and blood vessels, blood rushes to a person's torso and head, and then they experience puffy face syndrome. So you'll notice that the guy has a puffier face when he's in space. The veins of the neck and face stand out more than usual. The eyes become red and swollen. This effect is often accompanied by nasal congestion and sometimes even headaches. Astronauts' legs also grow thinner because instead of dropping effortlessly down to the lower limbs, the blood has to be pumped there by the heart.